Hi there, uh, welcome to this week's demo. So I've been up at my studio and uh, painted this picture today. Um, so just to get started, you can see my reference from my tutorial the other day. And uh, if you notice it changed there, um, you could rewind that if you wanted to see it. So I just wanted to show you the image at the beginning and the end. Um, so what I did for this, um, because a few people mentioned about having access to Photoshop, um, what I did in the end is I took my original photograph and I used a bit of software called Snapseed, which I mentioned. Um, so Snapseed is free to use and you can, it's probably best used on a tablet, but you can also use it on your phone. And it allows you to do all the things that I mentioned. Um, so in this case, what I did is I took my reference photo. Um, this is like the magic hour at, uh, what is it, um, down at the River Orwell. Um, and I took it into Snapseed and then I looked at some of the different filters and I played around with those until I found something I liked. And then I also had the option of playing with the levels. So as you can see, I raised the darks a little bit um, so we can now see a bit more blue on this pathway. So I'll put a link down below for Snapseed. But yeah, if you want to do some of this editing and tweaking with your photos, then that might be a good place to start if you don't have access to Photoshop. So that's the reference photo. Um, so a few other points. Um, Firstly, I mean, a broader point is something that I've always uh, said in my uh, art classes is I still very much see myself as a student of art. Um, so I, I'm always sort of watching videos, trying to learn, trying new things. Um, and so I always remain open to, you know, it's a journey. That's one of the things I say on my website. And so I like to share that with people, which is why I do art classes. But I don't think of myself as having arrived at a place of, you know, the master artist. So in that respect, I, I always like um, if I find anything that I think helps, then I'll give it a go and try it. Um, and I think this is a really useful um, attitude. Um, because it's very easy to, I mean, there are some great artists out there and that, you know, um, who deserve that sort of title of master artist. But yeah, I see myself um, more like an enthusiastic student of art um, who likes to share what I've found useful. Um, so with that said, I've been um, doing a bit of study online. I've been watching um, quite a few videos um, by a chap called Mark Carter um, who, on his channel Draw Mix Paint. So um, this painting today marks um, a few of the sort of lessons that I've learned there. Um, so I'll just I'll go through some of them. First thing is you can see I've stained the canvas. So this is a little bit different from how I normally, I normally tone the canvas on the day whilst I'm doing the painting. But in this case, I've actually applied a stain, which was um, a bit of titanium white and burnt umber. Um, and again, this was inspired by, uh, from um, Mark's Draw Mix paint channel. So I'll put the link also for that staining the canvas uh, below. Um, and I was curious to give it a go, really. Um, it's I say it's not something I normally do, um, but he describes, you know, some of the strengths and weaknesses. And I think one thing that um, I sort of understood about it, perhaps that I didn't before, is the principle that it allows you to put in your darks first time round. So when you're painting on a white canvas, often any translucency in the paint you're going to see that white canvas and not get the correct value. So by having the canvas sort of down a bit, it allows you to get your darks properly dark from the outset. Um, so I think, you know, that's that's a really useful thing. And the other the other uh, reason is it's it's easier to judge your values. I mean, that's the main reason for doing it. Um, you can see early on whether you're sort of um, 
you know, getting it right. When you paint on white, basically everything's going to look dark. Even it, even almost the whites are going to sort of look dark. So starting with a mid value is a good way to go. So, um, so that was one of the things. The other thing is I played a little bit around with my setup, trying to um, improve the lighting. Uh, not specifically for the camera, um, but for myself. I wanted to get it so... Um, I was getting as little glare um, on the uh, on the surface as possible, and I think this really helps in terms of you know you really need to be able to see what's going on on the canvas. Um, if you have glare and reflection, it makes it much harder to assess your your values and your color notes, especially when you when you're trying to get subtle. Okay, and as you can see, that's what I'm doing here is I'm doing this dark path and I'm putting in this blue and as you can see it's it's a very dark blue really um, so it's a it's quite a subtle um, transition there um, from the dark foreground um, and with harsher lights and without such you know with without controlled lighting it's it's difficult to get that degree of subtlety so yeah, I found that useful. I was able to see what was going on um, a lot more effectively. So other than that, I mean, I'm doing some of the things which I, I normally do anyway, which is, first of all, start my painting with my darks. Um, and again, this is this goes back to this principle that you try and keep the dark family and the light family sort of relatively separate at the beginning. Um, you, you're looking to create a strong tonal design so this is where squinting your eyes looking at the design helps so getting those darks in and I'm also um, having a go with a limited palette today so my um, the colors that I used were just um, burnt umber French ultramarine um, a sort of Windsor yellow and uh, rose, permanent rose, as opposed to crimson. So that was my limited palette and titanium white. And I've just ordered some more of those. Although um, instead of tight, instead of the rose, I'm going to have a go with um, Windsor and Newton's bright red, which is prial red, um, which is a very strong, nice sort of bright red pigment. So I'm going to see how that goes. The rose, the rose only takes a touch of yellow and it does give you a very nice warm red. So it's quite versatile in that respect. But I'm going to try the, um, the bright red and see how we get on with that. And I've also just ordered myself some new brushes from Rosemary as well. Um, and I just went for evergreen uh, flat brushes, a few small round brushes and a couple of riggers. Uh, I have managed to adopt some uh, better habits with my brushes recently. I, I'm making more effort to clean them, um, basically cleaning everything down at the end of a painting session. So that is improving their their lifespan. But unfortunately, these ones were a bit close to the edge when I started that. So having some new brushes to work from should be really nice. So this is a um, say so this is the River Orwell just outside of Ipswich, and um, this is part of a. I went out there as part of the video I did on Monday about them um, taking better reference photographs. So I was talking about the golden hour, which is the hour before sunset, and the magic hour, which is the hour after sunset. So this is uh, the magic hour. And um, with a little bit of tweaking, I, I was really I'm pleased with the reference. It's nice, you know, nice sense of depth and distance and getting those violet sort of hues in the distance. Um, not dissimilar to the color value, color sort of combinations we saw in uh, when I did the Mark, um, Peter Wildman uh, demonstration a few months ago, who was using a lot of these violet blues in the distance. So we've got some of that. And it's got something of that, uh, although it's got this, you know, amazing, 
I think what I liked about it was this sort of nice sort of salmony pink colour in the sky. So having said that, I think that's, um, I've largely got the darks blocked in now. Um, so this is slightly speeded up time. Um, and I think I do a few colour adjustments as, as this painting goes on. Um, but that's that's the darks blocked in. So now I'm trying to put the um, the lighter colours in. And trying here just to find the colour notes and paint uh, get the painting fairly thickly and trying where possible to resist the temptation to fiddle with it. Um, this is an important thing anyway, is it, try to get the canvas established, get the colours in, um, then you can see the relationships more easily. Um, and it, that's a better place to start making the adjustments. It's very easy to sort of um, get your head down and start um, over refining areas, but say initially look to get everything in. Now, how well this reads on the final one, that's um, that's more like shore there. Those sort of pebbles are on the, uh, it's obviously low tide. But uh, I love this sort of cool blue. Um, as you can see, it's interesting because we get in the water effect. Um, so this is a, uh, a lake, Loom Pit Lake. I keep forgetting the name of it, Loom Pit Lake. Um, which is near Levington Marina. And as you can see, um, that's on the right and that's full of water and picking up the colors in the sky. Um, where the, the river is at low tide and there's just that mud, we're getting much more of this cooler gray blue. I'm just finding some of that color on the other side there. One thing I did notice from having having stained the canvas prior to um, prior to the painting session, um, the colours did remain. I feel a bit brighter. So here we are going in with this sort of salmony pink, using some of that rose and a bit of yellow. And because the whole painting has remained. Um, is quite cool at the moment, the colours. That's really going to make these orangey sort of yellows sort of pop out really. And again, I was just finding some of that rose down at the bottom there. can see now a bit more clearly how the tone of the background is helping me to sort of see the values. So you can see that that, um, that rose colour is definitely lighter, um, but I'm not having to go anywhere near white or my sort of lightest end of the spectrum to get the effect. And even with this, this yellow, Although it has quite a bit of white in, again, I'm not going to the full white. I'm allowing it to become a little bit more orange there. So just basically painting shapes here, um, allowing them to come close. Not doing any blending at this stage, just trying to um, establish establish these colour notes. So 
So using the limited palette helps, I think, because I say this is a very, this is quite a colourful um, scene really with the blues and the pinks and the yellows. Um, using the limited palette increases the chances of these colours sort of sitting beside each other harmoniously. And here we can see a slight, just a slight cooler note at the top of the sky but not a darker, not so much a darker value, perhaps ever so slightly darker, but that slightly cooler note. So there's a great temptation at this stage to want to blend it all in, but I think I tried to do my best to get the whole painting established. I think there I went in a little bit light. So if you remember what I was saying, in the reflections, um, the lights in the sky should always be just a touch darker in the water. So I think that could have been a little bit darker, that passage there. And again, we get that nice, really nice transition there. For, it's sort of like almost like a rainbow from yellow to rose to a slightly cooler blue. So as you can see, that's that I've really blocked it in now. So um, I say if the blocking is good, you shouldn't have to do that much more, but. Um, I think uh, with this one, I was inclined to try and push the push some of the detail a bit further, um, just because it was such a nice reference photo. I thought if I could get more of that sense of depth. Um, so after you've done your blocking, that's when you can really relax slightly and just start to enjoy um, tweaking the values and putting in extra little color notes. And I pick up that um, there's a slight lighter note there to suggest um, a field and that bit of headland there. So what I'm actually doing here, this is uh, perhaps another um, a topic we will look at in a bit more detail, atmospheric perspective. Um, how to create the illusion of depth um, through scale, through colour values, um, tonal values, all those sorts of things. Um, I say one of the sort of themes of a landscape painting is simply space. How can you communicate space and light? When I started painting um, in Ipswich, when I started painting properly, I would say, um, so I'd been working in customer service and doing that, and I decided to have a go at being an artist, and I was going out painting from life. And I remember a lady saying to me about, you know, not to bother with sunsets because they were a bit twee and um, sort of, you know, everyone does sunsets. And... Uh, I wasn't quite sure what she meant at the time. And I think um, my own opinion is that really um, any sort of subject is worth looking at. I think, you know, because it's not about the subject, um, you know, and this is what I say, 
whether it's landscape painting, still life painting, life drawing portraits. Um, it's not so much the content of your painting that's important, it's like how it's painted. Um, and I think that's what makes for good painting. So I think if you like sunsets, you should paint sunsets. After all, one of my favourite paintings, um, Turner's The Fighting Temeraire, is an example of a great sunset. And you do have this, you get more colour. And I think that's, you know, um, people do like a bit of colour in their paintings. And uh, now I think there was a little bit of a, I think the, um, the camera died a bit there. So I've restarted it. As you can see, a bit of blending has happened there. So I say that's the somewhat the fun bit once you've established all your color notes you can then start to soften it in places and although you it's off camera i will be being very careful to keep wiping my brush at this stage especially when you're mixing say from an orange or a sort of rose color like that into that blue um, it's important to try and stay in control of what's happening on the brush. So just trying to soften that gradient. This is where the brushes were letting me down ever so slightly, I think. Um, just because, especially for the distance, remember, you know, we need things to be small in the distance. If you, if you want to really communicate space, you're looking for little thin slivers. Um, it's very easy to make. If they become too big, or if the distance is too big and sort of blocky, you won't get that sense of it receding. So. As you can see, I'm lightening that value there. So if I get a chance later this week, I might go out there again and try and collect some uh, reference photos. Um, I say, although I, you know, I like this idea of the golden hour, I, I'm, there are plenty of times, you know, you will get good reference photos. Um, perhaps just um, maybe as a rule of thumb, avoid the middle of the day. Um, but yeah, even, you know, early in the morning, you'll get some light sparkling on the water and, you know, nice effects like that. One thing I did looking back at my photos, though, is I mentioned this thing about take lots. When, when you go out, take more than you think you need um, because you will be surprised. You know, a lot of them uh, may not come out well, um, won't be as good as you think. So just if in doubt, you know, take lots of snaps. You say you can always delete them afterwards. And this one happened to be, a, it was a close-up of a, a much, the, the photograph was a much bigger scene. Um, so I really cropped in. So it's one of the advantages of taking lots of photographs is actually within those photographs, um, once you get the hang of using your either your phone or your computer to crop your images, you're going to find within photographs um, compositions that you might not have initially seen. Um, so that's why it's good to take lots and always be open to that possibility.
so just a few uh, tweaks here. So it's still very much an a la primer approach here in that I am, you know, painting quite quickly. Um, I've speeded this up slightly for you, but uh, still the painting overall took me um, probably about two, two and a half hours. And uh, I'm putting in a few little wispy clouds up there. Again, trying to make sure I get the value right, so not too dark in this case. And um, I'm using a brush, which is it's a rigger brush that's become a bit splayed. Um, but it's quite useful for creating that sort of wispy cloud effect. So I quite like it for, the, for that sort of purpose. And the cloud is it's a cooler grey at the top. And then this one I do here, um, it warms up a bit. That's a sort of subtlety that uh, you might not spot it initially but what's happening is the clouds coming lower and closer to the sun it's it's sort of picking up a bit more of that reddish color so that all those little observations add for interest oh a big brush here this is a uh, a nice wide brush and that's great for I'm just softening the effect there so keeping the sky a bit softer a bit mistier um, just to help it recede and not not pull the attention too much little sky hole there remember less is more with the sky holes And just tweaking the silhouette slightly just to give a bit more of a feeling of foliage sort of coming up. And again, those trees there, because they are against the sky um, where the sun is quite bright or the, the remaining light is quite bright, um, I sort of warm those up a bit. And now just um, with a sort of gr a cool grey, just suggesting um, ripples on the water. So initially, I've created a smooth sort of blend, a gradient, and then on top of that, I'm putting more discrete um, shapes to suggest the water rippling. And so, what what's basically going on there is where the water is flat, we're getting a mirror of the sky. When it ripples, it creates little angles. And those angles are reflecting other parts of the sky, which in this case are a sort of cooler blue. Again, sea goes excellent for these marks um, on the water. Um, and of course, also using the effect of big to small, very small little marks and dots in the distance with bigger sort of diagonals in the foreground. Um, but again, trying to not blend them, keep sort of fairly discreet. And there we get that nice change from sort of that pinkish color getting picked up against that blue. So just some little reflections there, just again helping to communicate where the edge of the water is against that causeway. So this is definitely the part of the painting I really enjoy um, because every now and again some of these effects you, you, they just create this amazing sense of um, sort of realism or they just really seem to create the feeling of the scene as you remember it and that's a great great moment
And I think it's fair to say that if I had gone down there with all my painting equipment, um, this sky probably wouldn't have lasted long enough for me to capture it. Um, it would have changed quite quickly um, and faded to sort of bluey purple. Now you might have seen this before, this is my Tom Hughes Uber Ruler. So Tom Hughes is a great uh, plein air artist, also does studio paintings. And I'm just using that to, I'm using a finer rigger there. There we are, just that little touch, that's a sort of, it's almost orangey colour. And it just suggests some water that's been left behind in these pebbles and stuff. So I wouldn't paint a whole picture using a ruler, but I think um, for these distant bits of land, um, if you're trying to get this nice sense of it sitting flat, it's, it's, you know, it's useful to have it to hand anyway. And in that case, I'm using it a bit like a marl stick, which is a very sort of traditional artist tool for just steadying the hand for when you want to put a bit more detail in. So as you can see, it allows me to rest my hand on it without touching the canvas. So there we go. Now, I don't think there was a great deal left to be done. Um, so in a few minutes, you will see the final product. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this demo and uh, some of the things I've been talking about. As I say, I'll put some links below. Um, definitely check out Mark Carder's Draw Mix Paint channel. And uh, here's the final painting. So there we are. So um, as I say, I did a few little bits and pieces to it, but that's largely how it was when it finished. Um, I really enjoyed painting this and uh, yeah, the setup really helped um, in terms of seeing those values and, and seeing the colours a bit more accurately. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoy um, painting from your photographs. Remember, use Snapseed, um, see how you get on with that and uh, you can send me your results and we'll have a look and see what people have done on Friday. So thanks for joining me. Remember to like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you again next week. Thanks a lot. Bye.